part of the task of the book that I was very privileged to work with uh, Soko Gakkai International in producing, Subverting Hatred, the idea of this book was that each of us who write in it speak out of our tradition, that we are willing to criticize our own tradition and also to speak about the resources that may be drawn from our various traditions. Rather than criticizing another, we speak out of our own. And we look for those resources for peacemaking that are to be found within our tradition. Now I speak, of course, out of the Christian tradition. And as you heard in the introduction, I have been teaching Bible at Loyola Marymount University now for nearly 20 years. And because of my interest particularly in the three religious traditions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and because of my own experience there for a couple of years, I have a very keen interest in the Middle East as a kind of laboratory for at least these three religious traditions and how they struggle to find a way of coexistence. Now, to begin with, there is, of course, a very famous joke that any visitor to the Middle East hears very quickly after they arrive. And it goes like this. A scorpion wanted to cross a river, but could not swim. So he asked a frog to ferry him across on his back. Certainly not, said the frog. If I take you on my back, you'll sting me. No, I won't, said the scorpion, because if I do, we'll both drown. The frog saw the logic in this, so he let the scorpion hop on and struck out across the water. Halfway across, the frog felt a terrible pain. The scorpion had stung him. As the two of them sank below the ripples, the frog asked the scorpion, why on earth did you do that? Now we both die, replied the drowning scorpion. Welcome to the Middle East. Not very funny, of course. But then the Middle East, as many parts of our world, is not a particularly funny place these days, unless, of course, you're interested in irony and dark humor. Thinking again about the Middle East as this interesting experimental place where these three religions struggle to coexist, I think also of another interesting story that was told about the Sesame Street gang who were trying to organize light entertainment for children in this part of the world. Producers of the beloved American children's program were planning to launch an Israeli version that would promote mutual understanding between young Palestinians and Jews. The idea was to have a Palestinian and a Jewish puppet appear on the same show, chatting amiably, using a limited vocabulary of words that sound very similar in Hebrew and Arabic. Alas, the Palestinian puppeteers didn't want their puppets to live on the same street as the Jewish puppets. When the Americans tried to act as mediators and asked, well, why couldn't the Jewish and Palestinian puppets, if they didn't live on the same street, perhaps there could be a park where they could play together, they suggested. Both sides asked, who owns the park? Such questions can be multiplied, of course, in a number of places around the world. We think of Sri Lanka. We think of Nepal. We think of indigenous peoples in many of the traditional immigrant countries, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the United States. Conflicts among local residents, it seems, are particularly compelling and disturbing for us because religion seems to be such a significant and inflaming part of these conflicts. Again, thinking about the Middle East, three major traditions clashing. 
Judaism, of course, is informed by its ancient Hebrew tradition that sees this land promised to their patriarch Abraham, where Moses also brought slaves who were freed from Egyptian bondage. Thus, the land for Jews represents God's care and God's liberation. For a people who have experienced minority existence, frequent persecutions, and finally, a horrendous attempt to actually annihilate them in Europe, the hope of a land that represents God's blessing, God's gift, and God's compassion has obvious importance. To live there is to be reminded of both identity and faith, even if you aren't particularly religious. It is a tradition that is a part of who you are in the world. The land means that you are not rootless, and forever you are not merely a barely tolerated minority. Religion gives comfort and identity. Christianity sees this land as the birthplace of the one that God sent, whom most Christians believe, of course, was more than just a man. In some profound sense, this one was a part of God in a way that no other human was. The Christian tradition that says that God became incarnated, that God's spirit became materialized in a person from that land. So if Jesus the man represents the meeting place for Christians between the spiritual and the material world, then the place where this event takes place is considered important to Christians too. And the tradition of making pilgrimage to that land just to see it, to somehow feel closer to Jesus, has very ancient roots in the Christian tradition. Religion gives comfort and identity. Finally, of course, Islam believes that God clarified God's most clear instructions for human life and society based on previous traditions rooted in this land. The holy message of God, that is the Quran, was delivered through Muhammad the prophet, Muhammad the messenger, and part of his experience of God involved this same land. Once, Muslims prayed toward Jerusalem before the tradition changed to Mecca. Here, in Jerusalem, the faithful Muslims believe that Muhammad miraculously ascended into heaven from Jerusalem. To this day, in Islam, Jerusalem is considered the third holy site in their tradition after Mecca and Medina. Again, religion gives comfort and identity. The passion of faith that is illustrated in these three traditions in this place in the world shows us that the idea that there is a God who cares for us and that this God has expressed part of this God's message through a special involvement in a unique place on the earth are obviously very powerful ideas. The idea of a home, the idea of a place where we belong, it is a powerful feeling. It combines familiarity with the setting with the love of family and friends. All of us have a place in the world where we feel at home. Sometimes it is in the imagination, if not where we now live. Sometimes it can be the focus of our hope for the future, a home where we are safe, where we are loved, where we are among friends.